Hello, I thought I would do a bit of a working from home vlog. I haven't done one of those for a while, so I thought that would be something to do for a change. I'm currently working on this lot here. So I thought I'd show you what I'm doing. Um, the first thing I want to do though, is I've got some really fun friend mail and I'm excited to open it. So let's open it together. So this is the box that I received this morning. It's quite a big box, so I'm quite curious to see what's in it. Oh, this is so lovely. This is from Joan. We did an auction at the weekend um, for a charity event that we were doing to raise money for Mind. And Joan won this. Um, <laughs> I did actually have a bid on it. And I'd made a comment at the time that I probably should have bid a bit more. But to be honest, I was happy for Joan to have it. And oh, she sent it to me instead. <laughs> oh, it's just such a lovely, lovely thought. Thank you so much, Joan. I'm going to absolutely love this. Um, it is all, as you can see on the card, it's handmade by a lovely lady called Liz. Um, it was donated by Jeanette, who is Nespresso in the community, and it is all vegan. It's orange, grapefruit and lemon oils, bath and shower gel. And then there is a bar of handmade soap, which is Citrus Twist Soap Bar. Oh, just giving it a sniff. It smells absolutely gorgeous. And then it comes with... Um, a lovely um, soap dish as well, wooden soap dish. Oh, I'm just absolutely over the moon. I can't believe how kind you've been, Joan. Thank you so much. We've come out for a walk just to get some air. I feel like I've left the house for forever. <laughs> so I've come out to get some exercise and some air. It's, it's woolly hat and scarf and gloves time. It's so cold. It definitely is. It's only the beginning of November. It's not even officially winter yet, is it? You may be able to hear the wind. Yeah. It's, okay, it's breezy, maybe. but it's lovely. Look at this. That's Hitchin over there. Behind the unsightly tower thingy, the uh, power lines. And lots and lots of fields this way too. It's a nice view. We were just saying that the last time we were here, they'd only just planted and now they've ploughed it. I can't help it. Wherever I go, I find litter. I thought you were going to say, wherever I go, I find Pepsi. No. <laughs> who, put, who drops that out here? Don't. Found another one. It's a bit later in the day now. I've got the lights on because it's 
so dark and cold. I'm about to start listing these mugs. So before I do, I thought I would show you what I've got because I've got some interesting ones. Some of them are going to need a clean. They're a bit stained inside. So that's something that I've got to do as well. Okay, so this is what I'm dealing with. Some of you may recognize this chicken. Obviously, this isn't a mug, but I've pulled it out to list it because it needs to go on before Christmas, as do these napkin rings. But mainly, I've pulled out all the mugs to do because I thought they make good stocking fillers and they're a good thing to list just before Christmas. So I may as well start at the back here. I've got some Kath Kidston. This is an espresso set. So I've got four espresso cups and saucers. And then I have another espresso set just here with different patterns. So I've got the pink spotty, again, the green spots, multicolored spots, and then my favorite, which is the floral, the classic Kath Kidston rose. And they've got saucers to go with each design. And then I've got some other Kath Kidston mugs here. I've got a cherries mug, apple, and plum. I purchased all of these individually and originally I had the thought of bundling them together but since I've looked at um, completed sold prices on eBay I think that they'd be better off being sold individually. Also people look for these individually to complete sets or if they've got a set and they've broken one so they are better to sell individually. Um, I also have two of the cowboy mugs which I will be selling individually as well and then I have this uh, floral pattern so that's all of the Kath Kidston these I picked up when we went to see Carla in Bristol we dropped into a garden sale that somebody was having and they're vintage if I can get that to focus. They're vintage Czechoslovakian. So I have a pair of those and I'm going to sell those as a pair. Um, I have some Eeyore mugs. I have two of those and they will be listed individually. And then I have some Denby mugs. There's four of those. They definitely need a clean inside. So they'll be listed as a set. And then moving on, I have this espresso cup set, which is Hornsey. Little checkered pattern. And then another one here. La Cafetiere, again with my terrible French accent and pronunciation. <laughs> so yeah, that's another espresso set there. In this box is a set, um, an individual teapot and milk jug. And they are from V&A. They're in fantastic condition. They look to never have been used. Probably a gift that someone's had and just put in the cupboard. Now talking of V&A, I do have a V&A mug over here somewhere. Is it this one? Let's have a look. Yes. So, lovely rose design. And that is also V&A. I don't know if that matches actually. Does that match? Oh, it does actually. Hmm. Hmm, I might have to rethink. I might do that as a set. Anyway, I didn't realise that because I picked them up individually. Um, and then I have two Kew Gardens mugs over here. This one. And this one is a different shaped mug, but the same design. 
So I think I've decided I'm going to do those individually. If they were the same shape, I'd have done them as a set, I think. And then I have this lovely panda mug, huge latte mug. And that is Jane and Stephen Bourne. It's a studio pottery one. It is a shame it's got someone's name on the bottom. I don't know if I can get that off. I might give that a go. Um, and then this was a recent pickup. This is an ugly mug. It's very cool. Let's have a look at the bottom. Made in Wales. Pretty ugly pottery. I don't know. He's got a bit of a charm to him, isn't he? And then this is a vintage mid-century mug which I really like. I was very tempted to keep this. Made in England. But I'm going to see. I haven't actually looked up prices on that yet. So jury's out. I may, if I can get away with it, keep it. Otherwise it will be sold. Um, and then I have a Disney store Tigger mug. It's a nice, large, substantial mug just the way I like them and yeah he's from the Disney store this is a favorite from the outside it looks like a very small plain mug and then you look inside and there's a frog <laughs> so cute <laughs> I showed this to my daughter and she was freaked out by it but I just love it. I really love this. You could just imagine giving this to a guest and them getting to the end of their tea and then discovering they've got a frog in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's just a lot of fun. I love that. And then I've got a fairly modern Mr. Happy mug. But you can't go wrong with Mr. Men and Little Miss. And it's a good size mug again. So I think I can get at least £10 back on that. And then this one, I love. This is Port Merion, or as Lex will tell me, it's Port Myron. Made in Britain. So I'm not sure if that makes it vintage. Perhaps you'll let me know in the chat if you know. But yeah, I love the design on that. I think it's really beautiful. And then we've got the obligatory Starbucks coffee mugs. That's nice and they're always a good Christmas stocking filler. And I've got a set. Oh, I'm going to come down and show you. A set from Yorkshire Giftware. And they are Klimt, I believe. Gustav Klimt, yes. It says on the mug itself. So there's a set of those. They're all different. But I think I'm going to do them as a set of four. So you've got this one here with the tree. The portrait. And this design here. And then you've got the horse. Gorgeous designs. I think it would be a shame to split those up. So definitely going to do those as a set. Um, and talking of Mr. Men. I have a vintage Mr. Clever mug. He's a children's mug. He's tiny. But he is lovely. Brings back lots of memories of my childhood. And I'm going to leave that till last. Um, I've got these which are modern but they're just really pretty and they're like the ceramic cups they're like sort of Japanese Japanese tea mugs uh, but you could use them for anything couldn't you you could use them as ceramic tumblers you could use them to put plants in I just love the design of them, they're really pretty. So I also have this modern Scrabble tile mug from Wild and Wolf. 
cat should be a good Christmas seller. Inside it says triple letter score. It's a bit dark in here so I can't get it to focus. And then I have a set of stacking bird mugs as well. So yes, last but not least is the Coleco. Coleco Burley. Now, when I picked them up, I did purchase four mugs. Unfortunately, when I got one home, I realized the handle had actually been glued back together. So I can't actually sell one of the mugs, but they do have a value to sell each piece individually. Um, I think when people collect them, obviously, if they break plates or they break mugs, they're looking for individual ones to replace. So I'm going to do a set of a cup and saucer. And this is the large breakfast cup. So these are actually slightly rarer and certainly more expensive to buy. So I'm doing a set of a cup and a saucer for £25 each. Um, I haven't looked up the individual price on a saucer that I have spare now. But I absolutely love this design and I was so happy to find them. So I'm excited to list those and to sell them. Okay, so this is the before. This is two Ikea mugs that I picked up and decided that I wanted to keep because I really like the design of them. But as you can see, very stained inside. And then these are the Kath Kidston mugs, which have got really bad spoon marks. Now I've never tackled spoon marks before so this will be a learning curve for me as well and then I've got the fruit Kath Kidston mugs this one's just got some staining to get rid of and then these two have got bad spoon marks again and then these are the Denby which just have staining inside so let's make a start and see what difference we can make Okay, so this is the finished result. I soaked the cups for two hours in cup cleaner and look at that. You remember how brown those looked? They look amazing now. So it's really, really worked on those. These are okay. Um, I think what's left inside, difficult to get on camera really, but I think that might just be wear from use. And these were the ones that were the worst. These are the Kath Kidston mugs, the cowboy and the fruit. And these were the ones that had the really heavy spoon marks. The cup cleaner itself didn't do anything. Um, once it had had two hours of soaking, I took them out, I washed them out, they were exactly the same. So what I used instead was some Vanish Oxy. And don't worry, I have since soaked these in hot soapy water and given them a good scrub with some washing up liquid. As you can see, it's so much lighter than it was. You can still see the marks. But, as I say, so much lighter than it was. These cowboy ones were definitely the heaviest. So, I might try another couple of hours with the Vanish Oxy also somebody did suggest that pink stuff might might be a good option so i'm thinking of purchasing some pink stuff and trying that and the reason for that as well is that there are some marks on the outside of the mugs which i'm not sure if i will get off but i'll give it a go they're never going to be perfect. They weren't in great condition when I bought them. But if I can get them to some kind of nice saleable condition, I'll be really happy. So I've sat down now to start drafting. I'll get some photos done when I've got some better light. I've put the washing on so you can probably hear that in the background. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you here so I can get on with everything. 
thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon. Take care for now. Bye.